take a thumbnail with all those books, but you know what? No. <laughs> We're not gonna play the how long does it take for all these books to fall on Monica game. Hi guys, I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel, Mooney Reads, where I talk about books and things. And today, I finally decided to do this. I decided to do the mid-year freakout tag. Yeah! But, I'm gonna be honest with you. I hate doing these things because picking one book out of like all of the books that I've read this year, which by the way is 82. That's right. It's 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 difficult for me because like there are questions here that are so vague, like which book made you happy? Well, clearly a lot of them. If not, then I'm just kind of a masochist. And I'm I'm really not that much of a masochist, so I've cheated a little bit. And you're gonna have to deal with it because this is my channel, my rules. So let's get right into it. So the first question is, what is the best book you've read this year? And you guys all know the answer to this question, but I'm gonna show it to you anyway. The best book I've read this year is Born by Jeff Vandermeer. I have a whole gush, a whole, what's it called, reading vlog of me reading this book, reacting to it. So I will link those up in the cards. I'm not gonna, up in the cards? this way. I'm not gonna link them down below because I always forget to link shit down below so I'm sorry about that. And I, I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't be like, oh I'm gonna forget about Dune by Frank Herbert. This is still one of the most wonderful books that I've ever read so I'm gonna put both Born and Dune as the, my favorite books that I've read this year. And as you can see I'm already cheating and picking two books for the first question. This is just how shit's gonna go down. So the next one, I actually only, technically, look, look, okay, let's talk, let's talk. The next one is best sequel. As you know, I am famous for not finishing books, or not not, not finishing books, I'm famous for not finishing or reading se uh, sequels. So I do have a sequel here, but I also kind of have the whole Martha Wells murder bot series. Like every book, every sequel in that story, Story, just keeps getting better and better and I love it but I honestly have to go with Binti Home this is the bind up of the um, three novellas and an extra Binti story and look at that cover oh my god look at the cover I love it but anyway yes Binti Home is definitely my favorite sequel that I've read this year but I did want to mention the Murderbot Diaries series because all of those books are really really good like I haven't read a single Murder Bot Diaries book in the series that I haven't liked. And there's six of them. Okay, five. Five that are out. Because Martha Wells decided to write another one and now I have to read it. Oh, uh, okay, okay, this is really hard for me. I am not a booktuber that like pays attention to new releases, what's coming out and stuff like that. And it's not because of anything, but just I just I have never been like that. I I and also, um, new releases are really expensive. <laughs> so, well, the question is, new release you haven't read yet, but that you want to. I do have two. Okay, look, and I kind of cheated because one of these is also one of the most beautiful books that I've ever bought. And that's one of the questions. But I was like, if I add it here, I don't have to add it there. You see what I'm doing? You see? It's... God, I'm so smart. One of the new sequels. Look, look at that cover, though. One of, the new, uh, one of the new releases that I want to read is Jeff Vandermeer's Dead Astronauts. Now, if you haven't read Born, the Dead Astronauts are part of the Born universe. So this is, I guess, it could be seen as a prequel to Born. And guys, um, Jeff Vandermeer, insta buy, okay, insta buy. Even though I actually don't like his Southern Reach trilogy all that much, but if you haven't, if you have read the Southern Reach trilogy by Jeff Vandermeer, which is Annihilation and stuff, and you didn't like it, I urge you to give him a second chance because I think his other books are much better. So yeah, I'm really excited to read this one. And in my cheating vein, I have another one, which is Middle Game by Shauna Maguire. Now, I heard twins could be God's strained relationship, sibling relationship. Was this book written for me? I think so. I think so. I really want to get to this one and I'm just I'm just so excited. I'm so excited to get to this. Oh my god, I love it. I love it that I'm so excited and now we're gonna talk about disappointment books and now the excitement's gonna go away. 
because the next question is the biggest disappointment of the year and I've got a few and one of them I don't think kind of counts because I didn't read it I DNF'd it like in page 70 thank you cat for playing with shit and making noises for my video darker shade of magic I love B.E. Schwab I have Vicious by her is one of my favorite books of all time and I also have her middle grade series which is kind of ghost story series and that's also something I really enjoyed and when I read this I was like girl what happened this sucked I hated it it was very disappointing but along with those I'm gonna uh, I hate to do this I hate to do this because the, the the reason these books were disappointing was not because the book well no that one was shit but the reason this book was a disappointment to me is not because the book was bad but because of my expectations going into the book and that is Tudor uh, the family story by Leanne de Lille. and I hate there's construction going on I'm sorry you can hear it and I hate putting a non-fiction book in here because I'm always advocating to read non-fiction and the fact that I was so disappointed by this book still like makes me sad but um, if you didn't see my wrap up, my most recent wrap up the reason I was disappointed with this book is because I wanted some dramas and there was no drama there, like, there was no drama llama to be found it was just a historical book which I should know from, you know, the fact that this is a non-fiction historical book but my stupid ass thought I was gonna get some drama in there and I didn't so I was disappointed Heartstopper Volume 3 Fucking hate that book I was so disappointed, again, if you saw my wrap up you saw how angry I was at that book how the treatment of eating disorders was done in that book the fact there was no trigger warning for it and as somebody that is still in recovery from an eating disorder that really sucked monkey balls thank you very much thanks Alice Osman for not telling me about that shit that being said I already talked about the fact that the treatment of the eating disorder itself was really bad but I wanted to also add in here that the treatment of how a partner or a loved one is supposed to be the savior of somebody that is suffering through something like an eating disorder really bothered me because not only did we set up this expectation that you feel better because you have a boyfriend but also that the boyfriend is the one that is supposed to save you or help you and I think that so many times partners of people with with any kind of mental health issue are seen as supposed to be the ones that save them that save us you know like my husband always feels so responsible for my eating disorder for my depression for my anxiety he's always like what can i do and i have to tell him that he can't do anything and the fact that the media portrays the partners as the saviors also hurts people that have people in their life with eating disorders or with any kind of mental illness it, it really bothered me I, I think they somebody told me in volume 4 the boyfriend tries to help the other boy suffering through the eating disorder but that's not his job because he is also a child children are not supposed to do that of course you can be supportive but this an eating disorder is something that needs to be treated by a professional that's like li literally that's like me saying oh i have cancer and my husband being like i will cure you and i'm like fuck no man you're not a doctor so that really bothered me the other thing that really bothered me was there's this scene in that and i'm sorry i'm shitting on this book but really i was very disappointed i was very disappointed in it because young people are reading this okay and I know, I know drinking isn't supposed to be a big deal, but there is a reason why we establish age for drinking. It's got to do with our brain development. It's got to do with the fact that children that start drinking earlier are more likely to develop addictive tendencies later on in life, all right? So there is a scene in this fucking graphic novel where a group of kids get together with teacher's knowledge to have a party in a, a hotel room because they're all on a field trip and the teacher's like okay no problem you can have a party because it's somebody's birthday that's fine but then one of them gets so sick from drinking alcohol that they are barely like there they're like passing out they're not responding well they're vomiting and then of course when they vomit they feel better because 
you get some of the shit out of your system and the teacher says oh don't worry we'll just pretend it was food poisoning as a teacher and as an adult fuck that shit fuck that shit to like the 10th degree so really i'm just done with alice osman forever i'm not reading any more of her books because because i I, I, I can't because I can't I'm sorry I, I can't I'm not I'm gonna stop now I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna get to the next question girl that got me a little heated biggest surprise yes I am here to talk about it where is it where's my baby biggest surprise for me was do you dream of Terra 2 by Tommy O and if you haven't read this book and you like sci-fi do yourself a favor and read this book I will say <laughs> This book does have a phrase that I know everybody hates, but honestly, I've read it like twice, maybe because I don't read that much YA. But this is not YA, by the way. I would call this an adult book, but this does have the phrase, I held, I let go of breath, I didn't know I was holding, and when I read it, I was like, oh, everybody's gonna hate this book because of that, and you're not gonna see the most amazing character study of overachieving kids and how being an overachiever, like, destroys your brain basically and also i want to say about this book it's, it's amazing i love this book i was not expecting to love it i kind of bought it because i decided that i needed to really not be so colorblind when i'm reading and i wanted to read more sci-fi from black authors and from latino authors or latinx authors i i believe is the term used in the united states we don't use latinx in latin america that's why i don't use I'm sorry, that's why I don't use it, but I, I, I bought this because I was like, yes, yeah, sci-fi from a black author, I want to read it, I want to know what it's all about, and uh, this is currently at the third spot for my favorite book that I've read this year, Beating Out Solaris, which, mmm, mmm, chef's kiss. Also, one thing I want to say about this book, because of course, <laughs> would it be me if I'm not just like, ran like, ranting on and on I, I i saw a lot of the goodreads reviews and a lot of people apparently think that you can figure out if somebody has an eating disorder or if somebody has mental health issues from a test like a, like like it like a psychologist can just look at you and from your answers gauge whether you are ill or not and uh, as somebody who hid her eating disorder and um self-harm habits for years I can tell you that that's not true. So, yeah, don't trust a Goodreads review. I don't understand who writes those things because, really, this book is amazing. This, I just, biggest surprise of the year. And I want Temi O to write more. Temi O, if you're listening, I want you to write more because you are an incredible writer and you can tap into such an important part of being an emotional person that I don't think you get the credit that you deserve and i don't know why i'm talking to you because you're probably not watching this but amazing loved it okay mm -mm 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 -mm. favorite new authors baby you know it's coming we have daphne du maurier is one of my new favorite authors i have read so far rebecca my cousin rachel and i have two more daphne du maurier books but any basically at this point daphne du maurier is an insta buy for me even though like I, I think is she dead i think she's dead she dead yeah she died in 89 but anyway i'm trying to get through most of her catalog because she's such a good writer i love everything she does and honestly if you've seen my reviews for my cousin rachel and rebecca then you know that i fucking love Daphne du Maurier, but we're not done. We ain't going nowhere without me mentioning Nettie Okorafor. I think Nettie Okorafor is probably one of the best writers we have writing today. Like, I, I don't understand how I lived my life <laughs> without reading her books. And now I'm, I'm trying to get through like all of her catalog because she she's just amazing. I love her characters. I love her worlds. I love that she writes sci-fi. Yes to black authors writing sci-fi because and writing Afrofuturism because again, you know you guys know I love Afrofuturism and oh, I just I could go on for hours. But Nettie Okorafor has become one of my insta buys. The only thing I will not buy from her and it's not because it's her, <laughs> it's her graphic novel 
I don't remember what it's called, but I'll insert an image here. And it's not because of her, it's because I actually have a lot of photosensitivity and I can't stand really bright colors when they're together. They give me migraines and I actually have to wear sunglasses most of the time anyway. So um, the what I saw from the comic book, it looks really colorful, which I, I, I hope most of you will love and appreciate. But personally, um, I'm not, I, I can't because of my migraines. So, but yeah. Nettie Okorafor is like bae. <laughs> I'm sorry that I said that, but yeah, you know how old I am. All right, newest crush. Now this is hard because again, I feel that as a as a 33 year old woman, uh, okay, 32. I'll be 33 in October. I I don't crush on characters, you know. Not like I used to when I was a little bit younger. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I really don't. But I had to pick something, so I <laughs> Murderbot from the Murderbot Diaries. I love, I just love its sarcasm. I love its like I don't care that you care, but really I do. <laughs> you know that kind of thing. I really love that. And in the same vein, I picked Crowley from Good Omens. Now I do have the book, but getting it out of here is going to be so difficult. <laughs> so here's a picture of the book. I love him. I love that he. I love that he's a demon, but that he cares and he has a heart of gold and his relationship with a zero fell. I love it all. So those are my new crushes. I guess it's so strange for me to say that, but yeah. Okay, a book that made you cry. Now, if you know me, you know that I cry at the drop of a dime. So I actually have two books here, and you know, am I gonna not mention this again? Hell to the no. I cried through the last 50 pages of this like a child. I was like crying and reading and my husband was like, are you okay? And I'm like, shut up, shut up, I'm reading it. I need to I need to be in the moment, you know? I was like crying like a child. This is so good. I, I, I absolutely adored it. But I also have a nonfiction book that I cried with. What? Can nonfiction make you feel things? Yeah. So I have The Soul of an Octopus by Cy Montgomery. The reason this book made me cry is because of the way that Cy Montgomery humanizes octopuses and how, not humanizes, but how she reminds us that we are sharing this earth with other creatures. We're not here to dominate them. We're not here to be their saviors. We're not here to do anything other than share this earth with them and how little we know of them and how much we should know and how much we should care and there's this whole chapter where they watch how an eel dreams and i never stopped to think that eels have dreams see i'm getting emotional thinking about it because what is the eel dreaming about and I know that you're thinking it's probably dreaming about catching prey, but what if it's not? What if it's dreaming about a good day? What if it's dreaming about beautiful ocean water? And that made me cry because I love I love animals and this book really reaffirms the fact that animals feel emotions, feel love, feel pain, and and, and have friendships. And I read another book this month that kind of did the same thing, but I, I decided to go with this one because the other one didn't really make me cry. It did make me tear up, but this one, I actually did cry when I finished it. So if you are on the fence about reading nonfiction and you also want a book that is not going to like talk about poaching or things like that, if you love animals, this is a really good book because this is just a wholesome, beautiful story about loving animals. A book that made me happy. Now, this is strange because all of these books, except the disappointments, made me happy. All of these books made me happy to read. But I do have a book that I remember, um, I, I, I have talked extensively, or not extensively, but I have discussed that at the beginning of the year. I was going through a really, really, really horrible mental health time. Like, it was very bad. I had to take time off work. It was... <laughs> There's a, there's a fly. It was, 
it wasn't a good time and I remember reading this book and this book was the one that actually kind of made me smile made me feel really good so I'm gonna go with Jacoby by William Ritter you've heard me talk about this you've heard me discuss that this is basically Sherlock Holmes but in a supernatural world there we go um, and it just made me happy it was like one of these easy reads where you maybe are not feeling your best, I recommend that you pick it up because it's a really like fun, easy read. I mean, there are some like stuff in there that there there is characters that die and, and it talks about death quite a bit. But I personally really enjoyed it and I think that you might enjoy it too if you pick it up. So that that's a book that I actually quite remember feeling really happy when I read it. The next question is the most beautiful book you bought or that was gifted to you and this was such an easy one for me like mm -mm, girl let me get it for you right here look at this cover i know that like these kinds of gentle colors and everything covers are not to everyone's taste but <sighs> I can't. I love it. Remember what I told you about me and colors and how I don't like really bright colors? Well, this is a perfect example of something that I think is soothing and lovely. And I just love those hands, the dove. And girl, it's by Nettie Okafor. Like, mm -mm. I also have here, I haven't read this one yet, but I think this cover is absolutely gorgeous, even though it does have like high contrast. And this is Mary Watson, The Wicker Light. And yeah, I just appreciate, appreciate the cover. And one last one, okay? I'm sorry, one last one. And this one goes against everything that I said before about intense colors, but come on now. How can I not go for this one? Look at that. <laughs> this book basically has my hand and my tattoo in it. Look at it. I love it. And I also like that it's so bold and different. I don't like looking at it that much because again, it gives me headaches. In fact, uh, of course I read this book with the dust cover, like the dust jacket off. But I do enjoy when somebody tries to do something a little bit different and I think that this book does. And like, look at the end papers. Mm, pretty, love it. What books do you need to read before the year's over? And I really need to. I, I need to, I need to because if not, all of you are gonna unsubscribe. I need to read The Mistborn trilogy by Brandon Sanderson. I actually plan to read this next month. So let's see if I get disappointed or not. <laughs> so far Brandon Sanderson hasn't really disappointed me but I think I've discussed this before that I just don't see like this masterful writing that everybody keeps talking about and let's see maybe maybe I'll see it here. So yeah my hair is looking bomb. Anyway guys thank you so much for watching this video thank you so much for coming back to my channel thank you for subscribing liking commenting sharing and all that fun stuff it means the world to me seriously reading your comments guys makes my day like you have no idea again if you go back to my very first video which is my newbie tag I created this platform to have a community of people to talk to and every time you guys leave me a comment it's like yes i'm not talking to the void there's somebody there so even if it's just a hey your hair looks good today which by the way a lot of people have been complimenting my hair <laughs> thank you so much uh, some people have asked me if i actually do this like if if this is me like do we no that's my natural hair <laughs> I've got my natural grays. I just, I got tired of dyeing them one day. But anyway, seriously, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for coming back to my videos. Thank you for subscribing. Just thank you because um, this clap, like doing this has really gotten me through the worst of this whole situation in the world along with, you know, guys, my wages just being cut and everything. I love filming videos. I love doing this. So, and I and, and to know that you guys enjoy it. Ring makes me happy. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. The friendly reminder, I post videos every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Sometimes I pepper in with videos throughout the week or the weekend, but honestly, I haven't been able to <laughs> lately, but that's okay. You still get your Monday, Wednesdays, and Friday video. And yeah, Without any further ado, I bid you adieu, and I will see you in another galaxy far, far away. Thank you guys for watching.
Bye. Yeah, dance. Let's dance. Let's have a dance party at the end of this video. By the way, guys, just a friendly reminder. Um, Black Lives Matter is still something that we should be talking about. It's still something that I am going to keep linking down in my description box because I'm seeing a lot of people just kind of forgetting about this and being like, I did my part, I did my, my Twitter sharing, I did my shit. And it's like, no, 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 this is still an ongoing fight. So I'm still going to link down below ways that you can help, ways that you can donate. And always remember, it's not enough to not be racist. You have to be anti-racist. So keep doing what you're doing and remember the fight is not over. This is far from over, but we'll get there as long as we all work together. All right, bye guys.